Yeah, Lambo's got to play ZVP in DreamHack, I think, against Geralt. So he's saying he might do some weird builds. As in the bottom left-hand side, we start with our red Protoss play from Exxon Esports. It is Max Pax. In the top right, we've got ourselves a blue Zerg player, Lambo. As we kick off into game one of this best of three. Um, yeah, thanks thanks for joining us, guys. Thanks for your patience when we get this game set up. And you know what? Well, you know, Lambo won't have to worry about build at all if he's getting cannon rushed. So, you know, Max Pax is just going to make it even easier for him. So, uh... Yeah, here we go. Just going to be seeing this hatchery dropping down on the natural. And, well, the probe coming across is going to be uh, dropping down the triple pylons. He's going to be able to put a cannon in this little corner. So a cannon can go down in the corner here. And that's obviously a cannon that can then reach up into the main base. And you can maybe set up something here to slowly start robo rushing. Lambo's going to straight up cancel the hatchery. Straight back into the main. We'll just take the gas. And uh, with that gas taken, he's going to take double gas. He's absolutely going to drop a road thrower down. And the question is, will he go Lair and Anitis? That's a pretty popular play to uh, popular way to play out of this. I'm just going to see these couple of extractors building. He does expand down here instead, which obviously makes more sense. He still has a hatchery out on the map, and Max Pax knows about that. So he knows there is a hatchery over here instead. That's just going to be seeing the uh, cannon will drop down. And just going to be having a Roach Roran in the back of this main base as well from Lambo. So yeah, he does go into that Roach Roran here. So Roach Roran underway. The Overlord of Lambo heading down the bottom left. That's going to be the full wall back at home. Question for me next is, does he go into the lair at some point and again sneak in toward that night? It's too early for that now. Right now, he's just got the gas to afford the first few roaches. You want to build some ravages. Um, but, you know, a couple minutes down the line, maybe we do start thinking about that lair and the potential nidus across the map. Or just the nidus to retake a base elsewhere and to get your drones out of your main base eventually as well. There's definitely some possibilities. So three roaches on the way up. We do see this selling about a pop out from Max Pax. And now a store going to follow up as well. There's double shield battery in the corner. So with two shield batteries already coming up in the corner here, just going to be having another pylon in the middle. And just going to be seeing the extra ravages all coming in from Lambo in the main base. We do see a couple of Zelds are going to go in for the hatch roll down the right hand side. So continue to swipe their way through this hatch. Doing a really decent job of putting some damage out here, so... Hatch taking a good few hits. Stalker trying to poke at the front, and that Ravager taking some damage as well. There's a couple of roaches popping out. And a couple of these queens here from Lambo setting up as well, as we do see the... Couple of corrosive vials down onto the cannon. Let's just try and keep this at bay. A couple of Stalkers. A little bit of damage out. Hits a roach. Files trying to hit this cannon again, and well, I mean, the real the real test is not actually going to be a, a robo at all. It's just going to be continued stalker production, which is really interesting. I wonder if this is just because he's got such presence in the main base, uh, you know, with cannons and so on. I don't really know, but to me, it's kind of weird that he's just going to keep building stalkers. I mean, there's the robo, but obviously kind of delayed compared to what it usually could have been. So yeah, an interesting setup. Problem is these ravages are in one shot numbers now, right? So. They're going to start one-shotting cannons. The shield batteries on the high ground are out of energy, and it feels like you've not even gotten that much out of all of this. And now you're going to start losing those batteries to the ba uh, uh, to the vials. And I think Lambo is probably going to hold on to this right here. How's it going to be seen? Our stalker still dancing. The Ravager gets taken down. The Queen. Picked off also. We're just going to be seeing some extra vials going in. Another cannon gets picked off. Um, the Stalker still applying some pressure up here. As we're going to be seeing, finally, everything is being cleaned out. So you kind of lost the high ground. That's not the end of the world. That's the easier position for Lambda to clean up. The problem is there's just so many Ravagers alive. I mean, now you're just going to be one shot in pretty much anything you bile. I mean, that was kind of the case for a while. But, like, you're going to even miss a bile or two, and it's still okay. It's 
gonna see the cannon gets picked off the first of vows going between the gateway and the robo i mean this is the issue as well you can file this robo from the high ground if you can buy the robo from the high ground well that's kind of uh you know destined to die then i mean what you're gonna play with one immortal in a prism that ain't really that powerful quite frankly Crab just coming down. I mean, they're just going to straight up fight this as well. They cr uh, cross the file down the one full energy battery. And I mean, at this point, a one base Lambo can just walk across the map and basically win the game. You know, it's a, a model can micro all its life. It's going to take forever to clean up all of these ravages and roaches. I love the link speed. A few links, obviously something else. The immortal doesn't really kill very quickly uh, and something that could reinforce an eventual slow push across the map if that is the plan. Maxbox does follow up with the Stargate, so if you do want to push it, you might actually need to bring the Queens across the map as well. Breaks down this pylon so he can break out. There's a Voidra on the way. Loud from Lambo. He does just take the expansion so he doesn't get overzealous going across the map. And I don't really think he needs to either, right? You know, you are going to take an expand fast. Then your opponent does. You get a scout in the main with this overlord so you even get to see there's a Stargate, which is pretty good reason not to go across the map too soon. I do wonder what comes off this uh, off this lair. I mean, we see an Evo chamber coming through. Could just be a switch into melee upgrades even and just go into like Ling Bane with this Ravager support. Some missiles on the Evo Chamber is just here. And the Queen's coming through on the low ground here. Lampo's gonna push that Void Ray away out into the center. So, Void pushed out into the middle of the map. Again, the missile upgrade coming through. Hydra Den from Lampo is gonna drop down in the main. Hydrogen setting up his Apples or missiles coming through. So it's just missiles. I mean, I guess that makes the most sense after you see a Stargate as well, right? Just going to missiles, going to Hydras. It's probably the safest choice of all as this Void comes in from the left-hand side. Queen gets there pretty quick to deflect it, though. This pack's going to get a Robo Star. The Phoenix back around into the main. Just going to see the... Shield battery cannon. All of this setting up on the front. We do see these roaches and ravages down the right side setting up onto the third. I mean, again, what what do you really do next? I mean, Max Pax is deciding to build Phoenix, which I'm kind of like... Yeah, I'm, I'm not really too convinced about. So I'm not sure if they're going to really add much to this at, at all, really. Um, so yeah, I, I actually will just kind of sit here and question that, I think. I don't know. I mean, do they help you survive a big fight? No, not really. Do they help you do some harassment damage? Well, yeah, kind of. Is harassing damage going to be enough to win this game? Probably not. He's going to hard commit to, like, a lot of Phoenix, though, but Max Pax gets scouted immediately. I feel like this is even worse now, because now Lambo knows exactly how much of a commitment this is, and he just knows, right, well, if you're just going to be playing, like, masses and masses of Phoenix, then I think realistically I can just... You know, take my time. You know, drone up heavily. There's no ground attack coming my way. If I drone up heavily, it's going to offset any of the drones you can kill with the Phoenix play. That's... It's rough. That's really rough from Max Pax. He's going to try and take a third base as well. The Lambo does feel like he's in good control. Look at the units tab. It's like there's an Immortal, a Void, and five Phoenix. There's not, like, any Hydras on the map yet, but once Hydras start coming through, I truly believe that you can just... I mean, I think you can just kind of go across the map already, but... You know, even if you just get, like, 12-ish Hydras... I mean, Lambo has a lot of gas in the bank, not many minerals, and he's about to hit a supply block, so you'll need to build some Ovies. Well, Prism in the main base shows up and tries to kill a drone, is unsuccessful. That Immortal is just not really meant to be on its own, right? Robo Bay from Max Pax is the next step. I mean, if you eventually get up to, like, Colossi, maybe even Disruptors here. 
I guess then you can kind of counter the Hydras, but... Well... I'm a little bit questionable about that as well. This Phoenix doesn't quite go down. I like what he's doing, though. Picking the, uh... You know, Cross of Balan where the Phoenix lifts the Ravager. So the Phoenix has to decide if it's going to die or if it's going to drop the Ravager back down. So... It works. For someone that was kind of very reluctant to build the Hydras despite having the Hydra Den. It will get the job done. First queen picked off, second queen picked off. Move on the right side, going through, gonna get rid of an overlord here. Another overlord taking some damage, a hydra picked off as well. Just gonna see these other phoenix come back up to the top, gonna get a queen, a hydra. Bunch of hydras, ravages. I mean, in fairness, these phoenix are starting to deal some damage, right? But, I mean, the thing is, double stargate phoenix is kind of meant to deal damage, right? You're not meant to just be able to be like, oh, perfect defense, I lose nothing. You know, if you do that, then you've overcommitted to defense. Because your defense is the fact that you're able to drone up heavily and absorb that damage without too much issue. What I'm genuinely worried about is that now Lambo is building hydras and he's going to go up against this colossus production. And that's why I feel like he might be in just the slightest bit of trouble if, like, he lets this go on too long. I mean, right now he's on 61 workers, not building anything else. So he's looking for an attack, so it's, he's going to kind of put it all in one attack, I guess. He won't have much of a recovery set up from there. Phoenix go back around up to the top side. Lambo's just going to go look down in the infestation pit. He's really not looking to hit a... I really thought with the drone count he was just looking to hit a timing, but I guess it's just because he doesn't have a fourth base already, and he's obviously mining out the main. He just didn't need more drones, so it's kind of short-sighted of me to kind of say that he's on a lower drone count, but... Yeah, just, uh... He's really playing, like, the very long way about this for the moment. Phoenix. I'm backing away, just gonna see this Colossus Corona boosting out, and... Father Council building in the main base as well. We do have a fourth from Max Pax on the 6 o'clock position, so... Gets that down over there. Couple Colossi, all those voids. Uh, I mean... As the Hive comes up, we're obviously going to start making our way into Lurker upgrades. I mean, this is just not what I really expected. I, I guess I didn't know what I was really expecting. I just thought Max... I, I just thought Lambo might feel like he had more of an advantage to make something happen sooner in the game. But obviously he's been afraid of maybe overcommitting in and then dying. And so instead, he's ended up playing this much longer game. And now I'm kind of like... I mean, I feel like the longer this game goes on, the more I'm kind of a believer that Max Pax can win. Not that I think he's, like, in a winning position right now, or that in five minutes he will be either. I just... I feel like the longer this goes on, the more he kind of just has to win, like, some of those bigger fights. I don't know, Max Pax is maybe super well known for that, but... Maybe right now his army comp ain't great, but I just don't think it's impossible. I think it's less impossible now than it was five minutes ago if Lambo hit the timing, you know? Temple Archives came up too, man. Four Colossi on the map, six voids. Now you're going to start adding in Archons? It's like Death Ball Central. It's like, are you looking to kill a Zerg player called 0800 Death Ball? And Max Pax is going to answer you with this exact army. He's going to show up at your doorstep and deliver this and be like, well, here you go, just go aim with the guy. And Lambo's getting a lot of tactical units up as well, though, with the Vipers. Obviously, the Lurkers obviously make this interesting to begin with, too. I do wonder what comes from the Spire. Do we go into Corruptors or so and, like, go... I mean, I don't think so, because Corruptors are going to be bad against the Voids, but if you get enough, is it worth it just to kind of fight those units reliably? Lambo trading out some of his roaches from earlier. He just doesn't really need them now. Max Pax is going to end up on the fleet beacon. Can you believe? Max Pax is going to end up on a fleet beacon here. <laughs> That's, um... 
kind of crazy in its own way, right? Well, Lambo's finally getting a bit more aggressive, really moving out on the map. I mean, the thing is, he's maxed out, so given his opponent too much more time just means that Lambo, he's maxed out with the bank, and the more time you give max backs now is just going to be the larger army he gets. I just don't know if Lambo's army can fight this. There's Storms, there's Colossi. I mean, he had, what, like two Vipers on the map? Oh, they have full energy. But they're going to have to hit some really amazing spell casts to turn this around, I think, because this Overseer sieges up overhead. Here we go. Colossi and Voids. Narcons and High Templar pushing through. Charging back a little bit, these Voids. Continuing in. Parasite Bomb goes down, and the Voids are going to back off pretty much immediately. Example for a moment looked like they wanted to drop into the storm on those hydras as you will see the spines down here picking away at a couple of extra zealots. So a couple of zealots going down. Hydras ravages pushing in. Parasite bombs forcing the voids to split away yet again. Zell cleaning up on the top side. We do see the Hydra Ravager army of Lambo. Back around to the middle of the map. We've got a warp prism from Max Pax, which is going to fly through. I'm just going to get another warp in over here. I still don't really know how well Lambo can really engage this army. Like, yeah, the parasitic bombs were cool and they did some damage, sure, but past that. Well, I mean, this is nice. These elves just kind of donate themselves. Oh, nice. Double feedback goes down before the single abduct. Doesn't get any kills, but now he should be able to push forward and fight this army. There's only a couple of lurkers here. Lambo has got an army swinging around the left side as well, though. I can't believe we're approaching 18 minutes on this Ice and Chrome game. Dodges away from the Cross of Bars, a couple of carriers out too, and I actually think Max Pax is realistically able to turn this around in its entirety. Lambo still trying to bring Roach Hydra through the center. High Temple on the far side. Yeah, Roach and Hydra showing a little bit of a pick off. Shield battery will go down, and get into this mineral line. There's a lot of probes that will start to fall here. Eight workers, nine, ten. All of this already going down as that carrier is going to throw in the interceptors into this uh, mineral line. Another storm going down. I mean, this is a really nice counterattack. I mean, the fact that this Roach Hydra is still alive after a couple of attempts to clean it up already. And it's going to get a couple of units on the tail end of this. So, really not that bad. Considering these are units which it feels like Lambo wants to trade out and just replace with something better. But he replaces them with more Roach Hydra, and I'm a bit more like, eh, but even then, I actually don't think I mind it, because they really did do a lot. 16 workers, nothing to scoff at. Well, maybe seeing the Hydras running forward here, the look. Uh, gets picked off, Colossus is down, and... Interceptor's already flying through. Again, I mean, this is the real death push from Max Pax now. So Lambo's got to figure out if he can fight it. 18 Corruptors are about to take to the stage. So, oh, 18 Corruptors against 7, 8 Carriers. No, 7 Carriers. A few Voids really help against those Corruptors. And obviously the High Templars and Storms are going to go a long way too. Lambo in no position at all to defend this topside base. The Zealots hit the bottom right. And Max Pax is just genuinely playing a pretty good, like, longer game. I just kind of come back to wondering how much of this is... Those are some nice uh, feedbacks. Only missing one Viper. I just kind of wonder how much this comes back to Lambo. Maybe not wanting to reveal a lot for Dreamhack. Because I really can't believe that this was his kind of intention. To let a game go on this late. Initially. From from where he was at. That's kind of crazy to me. As you do see Max Pax continuing forward now. I'm going to see the Interceptor's going to start to fly on in. Obviously, Storm's still very important on top of these Corruptors. you got to get rid of those Corruptors. And he's done it, because now they're just so low that the Interceptors will have a good time cleaning them up as well. And obviously, the Lurkers on the ground aren't really protected by anything. You're rebuilding, well, Hydras and Corruptors. Maybe you can do something extra here. Larkons on the ground got to try and stay away from the Lurkers. There's Harriers trying to fight. The Garkons going to make their way forward. There's not really enough of them. Max Pax has killed off that base bottom right. Those Zealots are still there, still putting in the work. As this is going to be a recall with the final few units in the end, but a carry and a Void Ray survives. Max Pax is still close to being maxed out. He already had a lot of extra carriers in production. Even Riyadh's a Void Ray. And my real question is, are we on any High Templar? There's one over on this side. 
That's the only one. I'd love to see some more high tempo. He just warped some in, but he needs the storms. So he needs to wait a while to get the energy so he can really, you know, have an answer to these hydras a little bit more easily. Like it's continuing to build. Do you see these couple of DTs up through the natural into the main? And I mean, just a little bit of harassment that will keep Lambo back and give Max Pax the time to rebuild this, you know, army that's not easy to rebuild. It takes a little while. It's expensive. Just a long build time on, you know, stuff like carriers. So something to worry about as we do see the Zards going in for that hatch. Extra carriers coming through the void build. No, but a couple extra vipers coming in. Do you see extra spines from Lambo continuing to set up at the moment? As a couple of DTs going to make their way up into the main base. Once more, it's just harassment that's just so frustrating to deal with. He actually, if he kills the hive, that means he can't add any more vipers into play until you replace it. And that's kind of a. That is a big deal. Oh, he's actually going to. Oh, is he going to get it? He moves off of it. He could have gotten it if he if he went hive first with both DTs. He would have easily gotten the hive. Thing is, Lambo already kind of knew about this. He's already building another one over here. Well, the Zelt at the top side it doesn't mean the main army can strike the bottom. And once more, Lambo's just in the middle of the map, absolutely nowhere near uh, being in location to really fight this. So Max Pax is going to come through for a pretty big cleanup in the bottom right base. Now Lambo moves back around. I'm still not convinced about Lambo's army, if I'm going to be honest. Let's see what happens. Storm goes down. The Corruptors had already kind of split away from it. As he's now he killed his observers in the uh, storm that he just dropped. The High Temple will continue to zone. But I like this part at least that Mambo will actually counterattack himself. We've not really seen anything on Max Pax's side of the map apart from him falling back home to reproduce for a while. So Lambo getting over here to clean out this space I think is a pretty... Um, it's actually pretty nice. You're going to see this fight starts up. Oh my god, the Parasitic Bomb is huge. Storms all over. I mean, the storms are also on top of the carriers, so there is friendly fire. A lot of the interceptors are dead, and that's going to be the big issue here. There's not enough interceptors to keep on fighting. I think a lot of that's obviously the damage he took from the storms, but Lambo's down on 140 supply. He's lost 23 drones. He's not really mining anywhere. And Max Pack's going home to rebuild those interceptors means he should get the chance to, I think, realistically play against this now. Roach, Hydra, look up to the top as we see if Yuzel is going to charge on in. I got to cancel on that hatchery pretty much immediately. This hatch will rebuild as well. Here we go with Max Packs through to the center of the map. A lot of carriers. Lambo is not even able to remax at this stage. His drone count is down in the gutter and... Yeah, I mean this all started off with the cannon rush, guys. A cannon rush, one base first, one base with, you know, immortals and all sorts. That really went kind of terribly for Max Pax. Like, it really didn't feel like it did much. Yeah, put Lambo on one base, but... I mean, it, it really draws me back to thinking that... I, I think I'll stand by that. I think there was definitely timings for Lambo to move out and do more damage earlier. They might have been scary, but... Were they as scary as dying to this now? Max Pax feels very good at this stage of the game. You know, when he's like, okay, I send Zealots over here, I send Zealots over there, that kind of stuff, and I'm going to have this big army to attack. He feels very comfortable at this sort of uh, kind of point. Oh, comes just the Corrupt is down, and that will be the GG as Max Pax takes game one of this best of three in the round of 16. Okay. It's a little bit different because, again, a lot of players not playing because of their DreamHack matches coming up. The playoffs this week, so... It's a little bit, like I say, just a little different. Some, some faces you don't maybe see as often. Bottom right hand side. Our red Protoss player from Exxon Esports. It is Max Pax. And in the top left side, our blue Zerg from no team at all. It is Lambo. Why is this guy still not on a team? Are you kidding me? 
I actually think that's crazy. Well, remember we'll take the expansion down over here and that's just because of the pro blocking initially on the natural. Hey Cloudbox, thank you for the 100 bits. Hell of a game. Man, it really was, wasn't it? Uh, honestly, just like, it was kind of slow. But it was really good. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It was weird. Like, really weird. <laughs> Man, what a, uh, what a wild time. What a wild time. All right, guys. Game number two. It's been really fun to watch Max Packs develop. Like, I feel like even three months ago, if you told me about Max Packs and I watched his games, I'd be like, yeah, he's kind of cheesy, you know? But now he's really taking, like, you know, a longer match. And he still is cheesy. But he can still play a longer game too, right? Like, he's not like, you know, it's not once the minute, you know, the clock ticks past the fifth minute marker. It's like, oh my god, if he ain't 80 supply up, he's in some trouble. No, he's he's able to control the later game armies and stuff like that. So, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. That will not achieve a lot early on here. A couple of adepts still out to the upper left hand side. Queen's gonna put some damage onto the adepts and Twilight Council dropping down from Max Pack. So getting the Twilight Council down. That adept gets picked off already as you see the drones making their way over and just gonna get us around. The adept does shade out of there. Another Ling is gonna show up. They're gonna get the adept kill. So adept will go down. A couple of extra Lings popping out and well, Max Pax is at home building up that Twilight and the Robo. So we don't see a lot of Twilight openers anymore. But this was not quite the super standard Twilight. This was three gates then Twilight Robo. So this is gonna be quite a lot of adepts into Glaives. It's definitely going to work out at a bit of a different time into what you would usually expect this to be. Rotron is building already for a Mlambo in the back of the main. Our Adepts will start to shade forward into the center of the map as well, so away they go. Shade now through the middle, all the way over to the left-hand side. 10 Zerglings up in production. That Queen is on the way in the main base. Little bits and pieces. Rotron going to finish from Lambo, of course. I mean, that's going to be on time because Glaives isn't done for another 40 seconds. So, there's two more gates on the way up, however. So, that's going to be five gates. And they're hidden away in the back. Does Lambo see those? He does not with this Overlord. So, he actually doesn't quite see just how many gates this is. Max Pax adds one more gate. Okay, now he sees, though. Now Lambo knows. Six gates, and he is fully aware of every single one of them. And while well, the preparation begins, a lot of roaches start to build. There's a few more adepts just going to warp in, and a dark trying to follow this up. Max Pack's really committed to dealing damage with this attack. Or oh, in the near future, after this attack, as we move through, and that's going to be a dead queen to begin with, and a few zerglings. We'll be soon to follow. Obviously, the real question is how well do these adept shade? How can they force Lambo to reposition? Obviously, kind of weird to get ourselves in on submarine. Uh, as in general, this map for glaives, I don't even really know. Especially when you take that downward expand. I mean, this position is nice because then you can send in two different directions. It's hard to predict. Obviously, now he goes to the top side. The lings were already over in this direction. He's actually going to shade in, so a lot of the roaches committed through to chase those adepts, and mm, it's a big decision, though, right? Because now you're going to get these links around you. You do end up trading out a lot. Honestly, a lot of adepts staying alive. He's actually going to stay in the main base where the drones came back to start mining again. 
Uh, a lot of adepts going down. Obviously, the plan is at the same time to maybe hit the third with a reinforcement warping. But uh, that's very slow to get going. I mean, DT is about to come in. Lambo has no detection. You know what? And I love it as well. Max Pax has identified that there's no detection. So he waits for the warping of DTs. Instead of wait, making a round of adepts and having his gateways on cooldown, he knows his opportunity here. And I love that. I saw, I, 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 I had this a whole bunch before with like players like Zest where it's like, you know, he, he realized there was no detection and he warps in a round of adepts. So he can't warp in DTs right away and he doesn't win the game when he could have done. This was well figured out by Lambo that the Spore Crawls were just in time and well surrounded by units to protect. I mean, he literally saw the Dark Shrine, right? So that was like a last minute preparation that actually works out for him. DTs will still cause chaos between the bases though, where the Spore Crawlers are not. So kind of a bit of damage in here and there. And uh, that's, for example, a dead queen. So it does add up. And Max Pax, I mean, he needed something. Because, to be fair, that was... Uh, <laughs> he was kind of... Well, he lost a lot of adepts. And his army supply is way down from where he wants it to be. The good thing about DTs as well is, of course, then Lambo can't get aggressive until his lair is done. So it buys you more time as Max Pax to set up defensively. Just in case Lambo comes across the map. Walk on straight now with these lings and these roaches. There's a men's up leaving through the top side. There's our missile upgrade, our roach speed coming through. I mean, just about halfway done, as you do see again. Blinking plus one, setting up in the main. A couple of Archons dropping around. A few lings getting picked away at here. It's going to be a prison that gets recalled from Max Packs back home. a lot of units from Lambo. Obviously, he's kind of committed to this. He's not really drawn behind it. He's only on 48 workers. He's got plus one and roach speed on the way eventually. But not here for this fight just yet. Max Pax got super battery on the low ground. Problem is his natural is being broken. And if you let units into the natural, then you're going to have to start warping and defending so many different places. And that really is where one of the big issues kind of arises in defenses like this. You know, it's hard enough to defend in one place. Never mind splitting off into two different positions. You know, right now, the Warp Prism isn't there to micro the Immortals in the third base, for example. This doesn't work for Lambo, and he backs away. I mean, it makes sense to get aggressive on Submarine. It's a short map. You get across the map very quickly, but... Well, that wasn't really it, was it? That wasn't really it, in all honesty. It's just going to be seeing our Evo Chamber of Lambo setting up in the main base. Getting that going. Plus one attack on the Forge about to finish up the Immortal coming through. And just going to be seeing the prism of Max Pax all the way up through to the top side. Going to move into the main in just a few moments. Archons. Picking away at these roaches right now. So roaches taking some damage. Fourth base for Max Pax. On that right hand side. And we do have Max Pax. Going to unload once again as these lings taking a bit of a beating. Honestly, I mean, I like it for Max Pax because his worker count was just so high that he's really going to power up an army while Lambo can do nothing but build drones and doesn't really benefit during the time of building drones. So yeah, I don't really... Um, that part really does concern me. A Stalker's blinking forward. I love the arc on play. Just going to dance forward here and pick off a bunch of these lings. Prism has the two Archons in it overhead. Our Stalker, Immortal, Sentry Army. Back down the bottom side here. Infestation Pit dropping in from Lambo. Carapace upgrade coming through. Hundred ten builds over on the left as we'll see a uh, army of Max Pax is back around over the right prism, bringing the two Archons up to the top and just seeing where they can get to. Looks like they might drop down to. I mean, just trying for the thing is more than anything, these Archons just keep the Zerg player at home. It's something they have to keep worrying about. 
They have to be in position, otherwise they lose too much. Uh, this attack from Max Max is super scary, because this is not an attack where he's like teched up a whole ton either. It's just a lot of units against a lot of low-tech Zerg, and it just is better for Max Max on the front of this than it is for Lambo, I think. Plus 2 is going to be done soon. I think it'd be nice to actually fight with Plus 2. He has his first Colossus showing up. Problem is, once you get to Lurker down in a Hive, then I do get a little bit better, you know, in a better, better, better mindset for Lambo. Because once he's got to that Lurker down, I think, you know, this game can really change. It can go a very different way. Obviously, we're just not there yet, as Rope just ravages, pushing through. Shield battery is going to get picked up. The second shield battery going down as well. It's a nice counterattack. It's the sort of thing that you want as Lambo, right? It's got potential to deal some damage. It's going to force a trade that might actually be a bit better than usual, and it definitely pulls the Protoss army back to buy you time for those Lurkers to come into play. That cleans up some supply for 14 Hydras to start in production, so you can see that that was absolutely the plan of Lambo, and it's worked out for the moment. I mean, Max Pax will recoil, going back out onto the top left side. Stalker's blinking, gets an Overlord, and continuing through, we do... Uh, kind of thing about moving down this ramp doesn't commit just yet. The rocks will go down though. And there's a prism over here and he's actually just going to warp into depths to just target down drones and actually quite a few drones dying in a world where Lambo only has 70 workers. That's kind of the reason he needs some lurkers on the map, right? Because then he can at least maybe trade efficiently without a good worker count. He's only going to have five lurkers initially. They are all focused around this base. These adepts will not last very long. They will get cleaned out the moment Roaches head on over there. I mean, honestly, take the prism in the main, warp in some zealots or something there. Does he have charge? He doesn't have charge. That's why he's not warping in zealots. Mm, look, he's out of position. Only these two that are going to be quick to kind of respond. There's a lot of units across the map, by the way, as well, as the first disruptor shot hits both look. Look, is dead center. Chips them down, and now only one disruptor shot to clean up. Triple stargate from Max Pax. Obviously, feels comfortable enough to kind of deal with this as... Uh, he's got slow zealots at the moment on this defense, which ain't pretty, but you know what? It'll probably kind of work. These roads are going to go elsewhere, but they're going to get cornered in by the re you know, the other army of Max Pax coming back home to deal with this. So uh, he actually turns back around Max Pax with the rest of this. He says, you know what? I'm going to keep the pressure up. Those lurkers are super stacked up. Disruptor, you can see the idea. He wants to try and fire into those lurkers. Two of them together would be better than just the one triple, quadruple kill on the Disruptors. And he gets a fifth because he blinks in and there's only, you know, one shot needed to get rid of that Lurker as well. Oh, that was a massive kill. A few probes went down across the map, but this is big. I mean, Lambo's being forced to rebuild his tech units again and again here. Force fields go down. The Lurker's kind of forcing this army of Max Packs away a couple times over. Max Packs is the... He's moving down the bottom as... The Lurker goes down and disrupt a uh, Ravager gets picked up. Plus side putting some damage in. Nice of Duck finds the Disruptor. Disruptor is definitely one of the scary units here right now. Maybe more so than the Colossi. The amount of immediate damage Disruptor can bring to this army is quite disgusting, in all honesty. Patry is going to go down, so Lambo will lose this base. Yeah, I'm not sure if he was ever really expecting to defend it. I mean, he really tried. Bottom left side, there's a DT and a Stalker that's going to cancel this new base. Never mind cancel, it's a kill. Uh, Lambo is definitely struggling here right now. As I think we can obviously see that Max Pax kind of smells blood in the water. Or well, Lurkers in the creep. As he fires disruptor shots, he's picking up a couple of them. Max Pax just sharking around. And looking for his next opportunity. Man, he's just gone to like five bases. We never really talked about it, did we? Because, you know, we mentioned it here and there, but it's just been one of those games where a lot happened very quickly. As disruptors can go and clean out these lurkers as this big fight happens. Let's take a quick rerend on that because I appreciate I missed the initial setup of it. So let's just take a 15 second jaunt back and just look at what happens here. So basically, Lambo goes for the lurker flank on the top side, the road traffic on the bottom. But lurkers, I mean, two, three of them go down before they burrow. There's honestly just not that much here. The Viper Abduct doesn't do anything either. And yeah, as you can see, Max Pax closes that out. And he wins this out 2-0. Max Pax!
into the quarterfinals, eliminate Alambo, who does have to play ZVP in Dream.